Hello and welcome to We Got a Podcast, a podcast about Dragon Ball from A to Z. From Earth to Namek to Sadala, we cover it all. My name is Randy. And I'm Poco Poco Doug. <laughs> We're, you've always got the fun ones. We're the world's strongest under the heavens duo here every other week to talk your ear off about fights, goose, and everything else in the Dragon Ball Cosmo. Oh, shoot. Dang it. Crap. I, sorry, I tripped over my... I tripped over my Pladia signal again. I just gotta uh, turn it off. Oh, oh dang it. Again, already, Randy. I know. Man, he's already here. Hey, hey, Pladia, man. Well, well, well. Finally hit the bottom of the friend group barrel. <laughs> with you, have we, gentlemen. <laughs> Maybe. We finally needed to, to come to you after exhausting every other option we had. It's, you're, you're inevitable, I think, is what they might say. Uh, who are you, uh, anyway? Hi, uh, my name is Mike. Uh, Vegito EX, Consensu person. Uh, thank you, Mr. Very Donkey much. Kong. Mr. Donkey Kong himself. <laughs> thank you for joining us here on the Donkey Kong Perspective on Plan to Eradicate. Oh, did I spoil the, the topic? Science. Sorry. I mean, uh, you yeah, mentioned just, Pladia. I mean, what else? <laughs> it starts with that sentence. You might as well finish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about some Pladia NES nonsense. Speaking of digging to the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> 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 we've exhausted all of the movies and the specials so we're like well i guess we have to do this now it's just we haven't reached evolution yet we haven't gotten there it's i'm excited now. for that actually <laughs> yeah i have not seen it since i saw it in theaters the second time which is sad oh, on its own. I've never saw it in theaters <laughs> uh quick quick catch up because uh our last episode wasn't a regular one it was our april fool's episode Oh, that's right. We watched Scott Pilgrim all the way through as a commentary track. <laughs> exactly, which was a blast because we both love that movie. Uh, Mike, have you ever seen Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? I have indeed. I have not read the comic, but I have seen the movie. Aha. Uh-huh. You should invest in reading them. It's a lot of fun. I that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's my thing on this show. I'm going to try to push people to read things. He, uh, he Doug, does, he get, does this every episode. You'll get your comeuppance. I know you will. But yeah, we did that, and uh, then it's it's been a little bit. Doug, what's been new with you? Um, I'm finally starting my read through of a uh, Berserk, and Ooh. I've been enjoying that. That shit it starts off real crazy, and I'm sure it just gets even crazier. How many volumes deep are you? Oh, I'm only like on volume two right now. Those, they're they're long chapters, but they're quick reads. Because was it a, a monthly thing, or because I, I, I don't think it was weekly, right? Oh, I don't know. I know there's like different ways not different ways to read it but it's kind of confusing for new people to try and read it because it's like Mm. it starts uh, in future time and then you got to go in the past i don't know but it's a whole confusing mess but i I think i have my 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 sources correct oh nice 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 uh i've been currently obsessed with a uh application for pc vr called mu vr which is just like it throws you in a little room that thing you've been doing that you like you're watching like (laughs) rock the dragon in a vr space (laughs) oh yeah it's a tiny little room you can decorate it how you want it's 90s tacular i've got posters up of like pokemon and animorphs and power rangers it's wild and then i (laughs) you can import you know your your roms and you actually have like models of like the super nintendo and and everything like that and you have to like manually connect the cables i mean like you could point and just like connect a tv but like it's fun to like reach back and like all right do you plug it to the front of the tv or the back Oh, okay, mm-hmm. here we go. And then you can import video files as like, and they just uh, populate as VHS tapes. <laughs> and it's uh, it's fun. It's fun to just uh, it's total nostalgia. nostalgia. It's pretty neat. Yeah, thing. I live there now, so you can find me in the past, <laughs> but in the future, in in the virtual space. Now, M- Mike, I know you've not been here before, so everything you do is new. <laughs> To us, but uh, what's been going on? Well, you're lucky I'm here today because Final Fantasy 14 patch 6.1 came out yesterday, and I could be doing that, but... Oh, wow. You agreed to this? I did, I did. I don't know what I was I'm sure he's doing it actually right now as he's talking to us. (laughs) (laughs) He's got the dual monitor set up, he's doing the show, he's playing Final Fantasy, it's working great. (laughs) Uh, I mean, beyond that, it consents you all the time, every time, everyone, <laughs> other than that, of, yeah. Of course, because you just had a big site relaunch, so it's kind of been the uh, focal thing. It has, yeah. We just hit 10 years on our fusion from Daizenshu EX and Konsentai into Konsenshu. We did that on God, it's been first. only 10 years? It feels like that was a long, long time ago. I know, <laughs> I know. God, for those Zoomers out there, Mike is uh, running a podcast, or not, not running a podcast, a website <laughs> slash podcast, 
Konzenshu, Daizenshu EX. Man, it, it, we really grew up on that shit. It's true. Very, very true, man. It's, uh, so it's a appreciated. pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I love No, you thank guys. you, so, man. Here we are. <laughs> Doug might ask you for an autograph later. If that's gonna be okay. <laughs> no, I'm still waiting for that damn no. autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to mail it to you one day. <laughs> 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 what is this junk mail? <laughs> <Throw it away. laughs> oh man! Well, anyway, we've got you here because we have a very special topic. Like we said, scraping the bottom of the barrel. We're talking about <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, the plan to eradicate the science. And I think you you know a thing or two, right, Mike? Can you tell us just what this thing is? Where did it come from? I may, man. I want to give you the history on this because just the the more that we actually like put all the dates next to each other. And we've gotten mm-hmm. a couple little recent interviews over the last couple of years specifically. It's like, holy cow, it's a miracle that this franchise worked out the way it did. It's so much. <laughs> um, Plan to Eradicate the Science was kind of like a multimedia blitz uh, there in the year it came out, the year of our Dende, 1993. <laughs> let me let me set the stage for it. Are you ready for this? Like, Please. we're getting into I, it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm sitting here at my desk. I'm taking <laughs> notes. Let's do this. I got popcorn. Hey, there will be a test at the end. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> So let me set the stage for 1993 here. So July 10th, 1993, that's when DBZ Movie 9 debuts over there in Japan. That's the one with Bojack. Mm-hmm. In August, I'm just going to arbitrarily pick August 3rd, because August is when uh, the game comes out. August 3rd, 1993, that is chapter 433 of the manga. That is Trunks versus Goten at the 25th. I'm getting that number correct. Tenkaichi Budokai. <laughs> <laughs> so there I was with that sometimes uh-huh, uh-huh. make sure I get that right. Uh, there was no episode that first week there in August, but in terms of the TV series, August 11th, 1993, that was DBZ episode 196, which was the second episode of the Anoyo Ichi Budokai, the afterlife tournament. So that's just kind of like where we are in terms of Dragon Ball, the kind of like the main products there, the manga, the TV series, and then little ancillary movie. So from there, we kind of have to go over to video games. 1992 marks the transition into, Super Famicom development, so that's the Super Nintendo, alongside still making games on the original Famicom, the NES. So the first Super Famicom game was Super Saiya Densetsu in January 1992. I'm jumping back a little bit, but you'll you'll see why. Um, that game was kind of a partial remake of the first two Dragon Ball Z Famicom games, so they were already kind of like hedging their bets and slowly dipping their toes into Super Famicom at that point. Meanwhile, they're still doing games on the original Famicom. So Dragon Ball Z 3, that is with the artificial humans, the androids, comes out in August 1992. And that game ends with Piccolo versus Cell, which just aired the prior month in the TV series. And it's got some Movie 5 stuff in there. So that game's story for its story arc is not even complete within the game. So now we get to 1993. Ignoring the little card game reader, next is Super Butoden 1 in March 1993, which is a fighting game. So they're they're jumping into the world of fighting games there on Super Famicom. And it's basically up through Cell. Um, it's not even, well, I guess there's the hidden characters there. So they're kind of in the same time frame there as well. And that's when we get to Dragon Ball Z Gaiden, Plan to Eradicate the Science. As you can see, they are stuck. There is literally no more story for them to make a video game out of. Like, what are they going to do? They could make an afterlife tournament game, I I guess, but like that would just be one other character into a fighting game, something like that. Um, They're not going to make an entire video game around the great Saiyaman stuff. It's just not going to happen at this time. So what do we do? All right, they have the brilliant idea. Let's finally make a completely original storyline game. So something that's not based on the original manga, the original TV series, or even the movies. This is going to be original to a video game. So we get Takao Koyama, a name you're probably familiar with, scripting um, from the Dragon Ball Z films, working on TV series stuff. He writes the story to this game. And as they get working on this game, they're like, they're at Bondi. They're going, this this could be a thing. We're going to put out this Famicom game, but we're also going to animate things. And we're going to make this into an animation feature. By the way, Bondi is also working on this new system called the Pladia, which is a CD <laughs> interactive game feature. Um, we're going to, all right, so we're going to put out the Famicom game, but we're actually going to put out the animation first. And that's going to lead into the game, which is then going to lead into more animation. And then we're going to expand this into the Pladia games. It became a massive thing. I mean, there's so many parts to plan to eradicate the science that when you say, oh, plan to eradicate, it's like, well, what are you actually talking about? Are you talking about the animation? You're talking about the original Famicom game? You're talking about the Playdia games? You're talking about the remake from so many years later? And it's just a wild story. That's how we get 
to plan to eradicate the science. There is no more Dragon Ball. We have to make our own. <laughs> wow. Man, it's so wild that, I mean, granted, we've been, you know, making games for, you know, a little bit here, but it took this long before they decided to to go off and do their own thing. Yeah, well, well I, they had no, a, no choice left. Right. And, and as a collective whole, because there has certainly been, you know, their own little what if storylines uh, in games before. There's one in particular I like in um, Gekishin Frieza, which is DBZ2. Um, Goku actually makes a pit stop at Planet Kanasa and talks to one of the, the residents there. So, like they've had little things like that in the games over the years, but this is the first truly wholly beginning to end original story. Whoa. It seems like they just have like a, a bag of like Dragon Ball GT ideas before GT was a thing. And just oh, yeah, like, I mean, it's it. Use that. <laughs> For sure. They had the one well and they keep going back to it. I mean, like, you know, we were talking about we were watching it. Uh, it's just like, this feels very GT. Like, oh, yeah, they did this in GT later. Like, <laughs> like beat they for beat do almost. It. I mean, they kind of like took it. Yeah, right, exactly. Absolutely. I put together like maybe three lines of like, here's what the this thing is, this game and like the different points that come out. But uh, <laughs> I was just like, Mike, that's what a veteran podcaster sounds like. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Doug is disillusioned with me now. He's going to think that I'm just some chump. Great. <laughs> I'm like, am I listening? Am I in 2010 again? And <laughs> <laughs> So now we know the context of where this came around, but like what actually happens? So Doug, would you mind filling people in? Like, what what is the story of this thing? Yeah, yeah. What actually happens in it? Dr. Raichi, uh, Tsufurian, the supposed Cyan homeworld co-inhabitants, seek revenge for his race's destruction, primarily through the use of the Destron gas, which is quickly killing all living things on Earth. As Goku and company adventure out to put a stop to this Destron gas that is affecting the Earth, they encounter strange opponents as well as the revived Frieza, Tullus, Slug, and Kula. After realizing that they are up against ghost warriors, oh my god, the team quickly dispatches their enemies and learns of the cause of the mayhem. All of this amplified hatred towards the Saiyans is the product of the machine called Hachi Hyak, which itself is responsible for the ghost warriors, as well as Dr. Raichi, who at first appears to be the main villain of the story. After Raichi's defeat... Hachi Hyak becomes a real opponent bent on eradicating their science itself. Goku and friends ultimately save the day, much like any self-respecting Dragon Ball game or feature presentation. <laughs> That's right. Kind of uh, already went over when this came out uh, in 1993 um, as two different VHS tapes, part one and part two, that uh, accompanied the Famicom game. But for some other stuff here, the feature was directed by Shigeyasu Yamauchi, who is uh, the director of Z-Movies 8, 10, and 12. Uh, animation supervised by Masahiro Shimanuki, who's a veteran Dragon Ball animator and, and still doing stuff up to this day into Dragon Ball Super. Written by Takao Koyama, <laughs> who wrote many of the films and uh, and all of that. Music, though, was by somebody else entirely different. Uh, music was by Keiju Ishikawa, who would later on go and arrange and compose We Got a Power, uh, as well as Movie Eleven. Song. I knew it sounded familiar. Like, there was a little beat there that sounded just like We Got a Power <laughs> yeah. um, near the end there. <laughs> I had mentioned that too. I was like, where is this from? Oh, wait, I know. And I need to talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, I want to throw in some some names here into the credits list. Cause yeah, I always, let's do it. I always forget about this. I go back and look at the, the key animation list. This feature is kind of like a who's who of the best of Dragon Ball animation. Seriously, It's wild. It is. We've got Naoki Tate. You've mentioned Masahiro Shimanuki. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Tadayoshi Yamamoro himself in here at some point. Um, yeah. Hitoshi Inaba. I mean, now Hitoshi Shida. Shida. How can I skip over Shida? Like, I'm looking at this list going, right. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just, yeah, seriously, a who's who. We were watching it and we were like, man, this looks really good. I was expecting this to be very bare bones and just like, ah, whatever. It's just a companion to a Famicom game. Who gives a rip? But yeah, but like, sometimes it just like blows my mind how amazing it looks. Like, oh, this, this is fantastic. And then it just dips right back down to yeah, yeah. <laughs> not so great quality. <laughs> Were they all working on this when those bad episodes of Cell were happening? I feel like that's what was going on. <laughs> but I appreciate this style way more than I do like the new remake version. It just looks all oh, bland. Mm, yeah. This actually has the charm of the 90s and everything. Even like the, the, the pastel colors of like the background just look amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we also had a lot of really great uh, new character designs. You know, those those monsters. Oh, that show yeah, up. absolutely. Might. <laughs> let, <laughs> let me ask you, did these monsters look more naked to you? than anything else in the series. Yeah. yeah. What is it about these creatures? I don't know. I think it's just how round they are and they have little mohawks and stuff. It's, I don't know. 
You it's, feel almost I, I, I think it's because like yeah. yeah, like a lot of animals or creatures in this world always have clothes or armor. So it's really weird to see yeah, yeah. something like that without armor. It's it's like ugh, they're naked. <laughs> so I want to talk about the story uh, of this. I know that we kind of gave the quick synopsis, but you know, we just watched it. I think we should talk about uh, a little bit here, blow by blow. Uh, I will also mention I rewatched uh, Plan to Eradicate the Super Science last night just so I could have some some extra context oh, to man. things. I watch them both too. I want to let everyone know I watch this the true way because I am, as you know, I am a true believer <laughs> and only true fans watch them yes. this way. Now this is that's in a Randy's VR. Statement, please. Um, I actually watched the old VHS fan sub from Ramza and Cardass from 1999, 2000. Wow. Uh, I figured like that was going to be the most authentic way for me to watch this. <laughs> yep. So, no, yeah. you plug in your Pladia and you play like a champion. <laughs> my, right? my, Pla- uh, my Pladia power's on, but the disc drive doesn't work anymore. So. Oh no. Yeah. Can you imagine spending well. 20 hours just, to watch the story the authentic way <laughs> how long was the game like i've never played it so i have zero idea it's longer there are more scenes i want to say there there are more extra scenes in the second part but it also runs at like five frames a second so don't think you're oh. getting it's like low res and oh. super low frame rate so you honestly mm. like there are pros and cons to the original famicom game the playdia game so they're just base animation that we're talking about here um none of them's like a perfect way to get this store for so <laughs> what was the gameplay of the famicom game like so it is card based so there there have been plenty of these games by this point mm. where you're you kind of start on a map and then you you're choosing cards at the bottom of the screen and they kind of like cycle in and out as you choose them like you you use one it's like five okay so you move five spaces on the map and at some point it'll trandom trandom trigger a random <laughs> it'll trandom a battle it'll trandom. oh of course it will <laughs> absolutely <laughs> as we all know trandom is a, a term so it was such confidence that i'm like yeah trandom I, it must be a word i don't know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just smile and nod yeah right, right. so you would so get it's kind of like like budokai 2 or um the the game boy advance game that was like a card game Back in America, I I've only played like five minutes of Legendary Super Warriors. I always mean to go back That's to that the game. One. I know people love it, but yeah, you get like world mappy. It's like quasi. It's it is RPG, but like light mm. Dragon Ball RPG kind of style thing. More focused on the map and kind of like flying around and and doing the battles and and swapping. I was out saying cards. I thought it was cool how they had actual location names or at least yeah. some what mm-hmm. is called the Land of Ice. But like Poco Poco Volcano was like, oh, I wish they would like use this and make a new game out of it. Not like right. maybe like a fan game, not an actual official one that will just be dumb. But sure. I don't know, <laughs> something fun out of those names. Right. So the story kind of opens up, uh, jumping into that with uh, Goku and Gohan out doing doing their their stuff, well, we hanging out out in the woods. That was not a strong start. I will admit <laughs> that track like, was is rough. This the same series. <laughs> uh, but the the I guess the woods are not in a great way, and we learn that there's uh, well, Popo shows up to inform them about uh, Destron gas, which this is my favorite scene go- where he points <laughs> and he just falls over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh even uh lively creatures like Goku and them will be killed within seven days unless something is seventy. 70. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. They got time. Seventy seems like a lot of time. <laughs> like, <laughs> Some people are like, yeah, I'm cool with it. I'm seventy but days. Oddly is good enough. specific, too. It's weird. That's All what right. I said, yeah. <laughs> Why seventy? Yeah. Seems like uh, forty would I like, maybe. I mean, because you gotta have the, the four in there, because you know that's that's death in Japanese. I don't know. Seventy is just an odd, very specific choice. Maybe Maybe the, the game design, designers thought it would take you 70 actual days to beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> There's no battery backup, though. You got to do it all in one go. Oh, no shoot. way. Really? Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Just play it nonstop. 70 days. This is your life now. And it's uh, not going to be fun. So they they pal up with Piccolo and everything to go and uh, destroy all these Destron generators, which, you know, it's it's killing people. But also it's they don't have key. They can't blast anything, despite Goku trying a Kamehameha like three times. <laughs> right <laughs> off the bat. told you can't. Oh, man. You idiot. You sweet, sweet idiot <laughs> monkey boy. He has the nerve to tell the creatures they'll never learn when him, he himself never right. learns. Right. Absolutely. 
So it's just kind of this, you know, thing of we're going to we're going to split up into teams or I guess like single people to go and, and destroy these generators. And go, then goes we'll and slaps a rock and then sniffs it. <laughs> For, first, yeah, he smells a rock. <laughs> then there's a generator there. Yeah, I mean, and we've got some action scenes and stuff. I feel like the action in this was pretty good. And a lot of the action-y tracks that play during those are actually pretty great. Like, I, I, I would like to hear more of this stuff uh, in, in the series proper, but maybe that's a that's a, a hot take that people aren't ready for. It's very different than what we get, but I would love to hear more of it. I was going to say, there are two good tracks, but there's actually only one good track, and the other one's the one I already sang that I remember. They're all completely <laughs> together. <forgettable. laughs> I was going to say, yeah, there's one or two, but you know what? That's better than, than zero, so I guess I'll take all what right. I can get. Yeah, you yeah. didn't like the vampire one near the ending, where it's like a piano thing going the, on? The organ that's the happening organ, while yeah. they're like fighting Hachi God, I really yeah. only like the main title screen music. I don't like any of the other ones. Mm, that's fair, you know, to each their own. I could be the one that's wrong, and that's fine. I'm trying to remember if anything else of note happens in this Earth arc. Oh, that's right. Piccolo flies over land mines. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's so good and then of course our, our bad guy can't fly so he falls on the mines and just keeps bouncing back and forth between explosions he looks so sad I know. yeah the, the face he makes point. yeah you do and then piccolo is uh, also like confused not confused but like sad yeah, face yeah. as well <laughs> he's he gives such good face in that in that section man i feel it's like great. it would have played better in manga form if that makes sense like just those images yeah, yeah. and that whole scene <laughs> that did it, it felt totally toriyama there it absolutely yes did. it felt true yeah to it super did and i guess after they they finished all this they're like oh there's another one another destron gas generator back in uh west city so let's go there oh no there's more bad guys to fight and it's 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 frieza and and tell us and Slug and Kula, they're back. It's it's so wild because we think about how many times Frieza has come back. But this was it. This was the start of where that mm-hmm. happened. This oh, is yeah, you're right. even movie 12. Like, this was, oh, my God, it's Frieza. We get to hear Nick Frieza. Howell again. Like, it's so cool. Oh, no, there's Kula. Tell us the whoa. <laughs> <laughs> they're bringing back all the, the movie villains, not like not only the series villains. So you're saying this play the uh, <laughs> special ruined it for future specials to come out. Like, okay, I'm not, I'm not as excited. <laughs> Frieza had come back anymore. Frieza. Well, yeah, I mean, they've been back. You do think about Toriyama bringing them back. Like, well, Toriyama didn't do Planter Eradicate. Toriyama didn't do DBZ mm-hmm. Movie 12. So when Toriyama will do things like bring back the Red Ribbon Army or I don't know, it's like he kind of gets a pass, but you also think like, well, we've done that before, even if you didn't do that before. <laughs> Absolutely. They all decided, like, okay, we're going to fight these guys, and we're stronger now than we were back then, so you guys aren't going to stand a chance. Uh, and then every time they defeat them, they turn uh, into goop and then reform into and they're back again. goop. Yeah. <laughs> the first one was pink, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> we figured this out, and we're like, let's use this later for this other bad guy. I have two, uh, I guess one is a question, and one is, <laughs> this is more of a question than, or more of a statement <laughs> Um, oh no one how does slug know vegeta's name because he wasn't there maybe he yeah. i don't know science are you know they're feared throughout the universe he calls all science vegeta because that's <laughs> <what we're... laughs> he does. but i love tell us his logic is buck wild he's a scion killed by a scion so he super hates them even though he <laughs> is one himself <laughs> Yeah, it's it's wild. I think I had mentioned while we were watching it when Slug was talking, I was like, and Vegeta, and I'm like, I don't even know who you are. Actually, I'm upset that you didn't come to my movie. And uh, now this is my revenge. <laughs> yeah, just like the the setup for it. I mean, Frieza, sure. Uh, but everybody else just kind of seems wild to have this be their motivation. But it doesn't matter because they're just going to wipe the floor with these guys because they're so much stronger and they'll just always keep coming back until Kaio steps in. Guys, guys, they're ghost warriors. Oh, oh. yeah. Guys, I figured so- it out from Kaio. <laughs> I they're ghost they're warriors. back in my chair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, it, it still gets me every time. Like every time I rewatch this, which is not often. I think the last time I rewatched it was literally 12 years ago for a podcast episode. <laughs> but you think like it can't be that bad. It wasn't actually that bad when you watch. Like, no, he says they're ghost warriors. Goku says, got it. And then just I, I know your true identity. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I was like, this isn't this isn't happening, is it? This is not they're actually defeating them now by just that. It's yeah. so wild. Like that's all they need to do is just say you're ghost warriors and then you can defeat them, which I think they should just do to every bad guy from now on. <laughs> Whether it's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, oh, we can't beat this boo. You're a ghost warrior. 
Oh, no, still alive. Crap. I don't know how much. I mean, you mentioned you rewatched Plan to Eradicate the Super Science, but like this was the thing they fixed <laughs> in that yeah. version. It's, it's yeah. so good. None of that. It's, I believe, Bullman just shows up with a, uh antidote for the gas, drops it into the uh, generator, and now they're weak now because they don't have the gas that's powering them up. It's so like everyone get their, got their power back so they can kind of overpower them. Like that. Right. It's, it's very loose, but it's something. Way better than what we got here. I assume the whole angle of well we don't have our key is so that way as you're playing this video game you start out weak and you can build up in strength and that's how they do it instead of just being yeah. almighty powerful at the start right. okay right. that makes sense yep. i get it yeah it's like the zelda games where you oh no you lost all your items or metroid games and you gotta get them all back now all your powers mm-hmm. and you see stuff back it's not a bad idea i'm not against it it it's works just... for a video game it's not the most exciting yeah. thing to watch them in animation form do right because i'm trying to remember was what was the angle for fighters was it just like you this other person is inhabiting their body so they're weaker and they need to like power themselves oh up right who could say no one's ever actually <laughs> played that story mode <laughs> uh, I, I have bought it on two platforms and i've yet to finish the story mode on either Micah, so why is it 120 hours long <sighs> the why does that be bad it's so bad it's so bad look we could at least say they're, they're trying question mark sure i don't know sure sure why not uh so they've defeated the ghost warriors but our story isn't over yet they've gotta go go to space (laughs) that's always the (laughs) solution we gotta go to space yep uh we're gonna we're gonna do that for frieza we're gonna do that for this we'll do it for gt it's fine we'll just keep doing the same thing it's good the kids love it kids love space (laughs) (laughs) so then part two which we had skipped the uh recap but apparently during that time they explained like oh they went and they got this pearl <laughs> yep, and like yep. this thing to like oh, make really? this ship you actually go do stuff in the play day games and <laughs> the animation's like no yeah. we, we, we're out of time we gotta go <laughs> we're not gonna draw that that's fine just here's a title scrawl of like some text it's like they did the thing and now they are in a capsule corp ship like all right fine whatever you saved me time of my life yeah, and that's i good appreciate enough for me. that <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know, like a cute little designs for a little alien girl or whatever thing is happening. I don't know. I kind of would have rather seen that. That's true. I mean, instead of just the full uh, punching and that's it for like the second half of this portion. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was their choice, I guess. That's where they wanted to, to, to do some cost-saving measures. Gotta get to Ankoku Wakusei. <laughs> right, the dark the planet. Dark planet. <laughs> Is that what that was? The dark <laughs> planet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I thought it was pretty rad where they're kind of getting attacked on their way there in the ship, and it's like the hull is being torn apart. I'm like, well, they're just gonna suffocate and die. This is how it ends. Game over. Here's credits. They just kind of kept going, didn't they? They're just like, yeah, the, there's a big, huge hole in the ship, but we're still going. <laughs> I assume they were in the atmosphere at the time. Who knows, man? They're just <laughs> doing their own thing. And just then, attention. Yeah. I, right from the start, I was like, I feel like we got three frames of animation here because it's like, here's everybody yeah, in the ship. I thought and it was then Gohan moves in and then everybody up at the panel like, oh, there's here's the planet. I don't know. I was like, this is not both like, well. Wow, but did they use all their budget in the beginning <laughs> half for one? But then we have some fights uh, with like the nipple robot, which is I think what Doug called him while you're watching. It's a robot with <laughs> it's nipples. It's a robot with nipples. It was really weird and upsetting. And some good animation there. I was gonna uh, say fantastic. Was... I think that was the best of the whole of everything. Was that God the God the God 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 God? Go, go, there's some good animation with that dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't exactly think we got was, his yeah. name, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, I I assume that's who it was. But yeah, that's some good animation there. And then, I don't know, we're just going to break some windows. This is the only way to get into the main place where the ball pit is. Um, which... Yeah, he busts in like Indiana Jones. Just like <laughs> <laughs> Everybody comes in through the windows. There's no doors in this whole planet. It's just <laughs> windows. It's a dark uh, planet, Randy. Try to keep up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can't find the door. There's no light switch. Just break through any glass you find. It's fine. So then we meet uh, the mastermind, Dr. Raichi, who was a Sifurian himself uh, that was killed. It was pretty brutal in this version compared to plan to eradicate the super science where oh, it's like, like oh no i fell <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly there's an explosion it's like oh i fell off a ladder but in this it's like an ozaru slaps him and he splats against the wall yeah. like whoa this is <laughs> blood intense. trail coming down on him right man it was cool though like we have that shot of like the ship taking off and just like all of the ozaru science like in sh- in like shadow and like it was like oh, a silhouette man. yeah that looked like really like painted it was beautiful compared to the very 
very shitty animation from the remake for that part. <laughs> I don't know. Oh boy. Uh, but uh, so we get his whole backstory that you know he was uh, there and Vegeta. I'm not sure if they meant to say like it was specifically Vegeta's dad who did it, or if it's just another Vegeta in the line. Yeah, because I think they're more explicit about that in the remake, where it's like it was your father or something like that. Um, really. Mm. I was just saying, does that mean that the Tuffles have been, like, only gone for a hundred years? Like, Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, all right, if he's Vegeta the Fourth, like, how far back is this, actually? Like, yeah. was this just last week that this happened? Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's going on? Um, I, I did want to mention that the Sufrurian history, so the first time we would have heard this was in DBZ episode 20. It was filler mm-hmm. material there in the TV series, but it was based on background history memo stuff that Toriyama himself delivered to the anime staff. So even though it wasn't used in the manga, it did come from the original author himself. And what's mm-hmm. really curious about this is uh, Plan to Eradicate actually goes out of its way to say how the planet was originally Planet Plant. That was in Toriyama's memo, despite not being used back there in DBZ episode 20. So it's kind of like they're, they're, they're wrapping up even more back history and, and lore that we didn't know we had at this point. Yeah, they, they even mentioned how the Saiyans came from a spaceship. They weren't yeah, like yeah. on that planet. I'm like, I don't know if I like that concept. I'd, I'd rather them both living on the same planet from birth, you know, and then just like yeah. growing up vastly different. We've had like three versions of just like we had three different versions of Piccolo splitting from the original being. Yeah. But like three different versions of the science you furry in history at this point. Thanks, Toei. <laughs> <laughs> They got to keep coming back to it, but then they add a little bit more to make it worth your while. So now you got to buy this whole new thing. Koyama's got to the... get that paycheck. Exactly. <laughs> that's why they keep him. That's why he keeps sticking around. He's got to get that paycheck for dipping into the same story over and over again. <laughs> so we've got him and he's got his fancy barrier. He's also the ultimate ghost warrior. Yes. yes. <laughs> Great. Which is weird that he says that and then he isn't immediately killed. Like, I believe, like, if we're following logic, that's the magic <laughs> um, spell. Excuse me, you've noted that you were ghost warrior. So. <laughs> uh, you should be oh. dead after my attack, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that is the story. That's how it goes. So they defeat him and, and credits. We did it, guys. I love this it's a- so much. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because Doug was saying, oh, oh we're done. I did, we're, do we not do the robot thing Was, was Hashiya just, just like a, a remake version, like a fever character? Dream. Was it, <laughs> yeah, was it a fever dream? <laughs> you wish. No, he's back. You know, reformed from the, the machine that was amplifying all of the hate, and now he's here to exact revenge himself. Uh, except for I wanted to mention, there's this tiny little part where they defeat Hach- or, uh, Dr. Raichi, and he's just like this little drippy blob that like yeah. falls on the ground and is yeah. just, you and so know, cursing the science. Animated at 120 frames a second is really weird. Exactly. Yeah. It's so fast and smooth. Oh, man. I just, it was good. I was impressed by that. It has the same awesome. like voice as the little plant creature yelling out Bardock's name in the special, the new one. <laughs> Bardock's on, Bardock's on. <laughs> And uh, so now the uh, machine is on a rampage, so they're going to to fight him, and he's he's very strong. He might he might even guys he might even be stronger than Broly. <laughs> All right, so where do we put Hachiyak? So Goku also compared Janemba to Broly, so we hmm. really have to oh, just no. put this. Uh, shoot me <laughs> we'll now. take your comments down below. And let us know who you think <laughs> stronger. Well, it's very easy, guys. I have a very simple formula. It's power is maximum plus one. Oh, and <laughs> that's easy math. So yeah. that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was I mean, saying that easy. how it seemed like none of our characters' strength mattered in this particular fight. It was just to show that they're all weaker than this character. So I, I would have had no problem with Gohan turning Super Saiyan two, but I don't know if that was introduced yet in this Which, in the series. By the think- way, art for this game, I'm looking at the soundtrack <laughs> to it right now, and Gohan Super Saiyan two on the cover of the artwork. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it would have been cool for them to throw us a bone like that and just have him transform, but... That should have been, you play the game on New Game Plus, yeah, and then the go. new ending, he transforms and he beats him on his own. They don't need to do some counting jibber-jabber, none of that. He's just just bodies him. It's great. Oh, I should have I should have been on this, this team. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a terrible idea. But yeah, if it's, you know, they he's just overpowering them. It's, uh, it's strange. And then also... Goku is like the one that comes up with the wait if I I'm gonna count and that's gonna tell me when he's weakest because did they explicitly say like no. he gets weak when he attacks or is just like uh, was there anything there that I missed I didn't see anything 
I believe in, in Plan to Eradicate the Super Science, he brings up like he is weak when he attacks. Was that something that I missed when we, we were watching it through this version? I don't know. Or... I mean, I'm watching fan subs from <laughs> 1999. So. No, he doesn't True. say anything. Like he, he's, he's literally like Goku says nothing. He's just watching him. Or no, he's counting, but doesn't explain himself. And then the music kicks in like, oh, he, it's an epiphany. He, he realized it, yeah, but yeah. never explains it. Yeah, why not? That seems like a good enough reason to me, you know? He's just, uh, he's going to figure it out. I mean, Goku is pretty smart when it comes to fighting. So I guess I shouldn't be dogging on him being the one coming up with the idea. But it's so weird for them not to explain it to us, the audience, when everything else is kind of always handed to us on the server, server platter. Right, exactly. But you know what? Eventually they overcome it. They beat him by combining all their attacks at once and timing it just right. I assume there was some sort of timing mini game in, in the original version. The Pladia version specifically, I believe there is, but not in the Famicom. Um, what? In the Pladia version, there's actually like multiple versions of this fight. He's giant at some point. I forget exactly. I've never made it that far. To be honest, <laughs> I think when I played this second game on the Pladia, the very beginning is like you're navigating space. It's literally just you in space. It's first person stars. And you press left what? or right. And I'm like, I'm not going to play this game. I have better things to do with my life. <laughs> so right. I don't believe I ever made it past that in the second game, which has you know more to the Hachiyak fight. I don't blame you. Yeah, absolutely. Oof. But uh, yeah, they beat him and then they get to go home and, and Chi-Chi's making dinner. So everything is peachy Does now. Does he still even on get him, like... animated? No. Yeah, he gets a voice right. line. But oh. That's it. Bowling gets animated in the their like, beautiful like pink outfit that I love so much. And uh, Yeah, I, I, they... they Bother to give Bulma a new look and an outfit. So, I mean, I feel like yeah, that, right? that makes it real Dragon Ball. So that's mm-hmm. nice. But yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of that's kind of the blow by blow. Did Here's the big question. Did we like it? Was there any part of it that we liked? Mike, what do you have to say? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's it's not good, but I'm not offended feel, by it. <laughs> I feel like this has been such an important part of my site's history in many ways, um, <laughs> like ver- various incarnations of it and getting a Pladia and like having this be part of like my collection and, and site. I am the bias and I like, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I, I'm never as offended by it as I think I'm going to be. There are certain mm. elements of it, like the, their ghost warriors. Okay. And just, Sure. <laughs> figuring out how to defeat Hachihak at the end. Like, okay, I guess we did that. It's, I don't know. It's like standard DBZ fare, like C plus kind of like movie. Yeah. Level. Like I would watch this above slug. I would watch this. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm coming around. I'm, Fire Broly these days too. This is something <laughs> wrong in my head. I don't That's, know. No, join us. <laughs> it's not as bad as people say. You know what? Movie six is trash. No. I'm coming, I'm gonna say it. Movie six okay. is horrible. <laughs> dun, 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 Play that one good track from. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if we offended you in that episode where we talked about movie six being trash. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I, I don't make. You know, as much as I joke about it, like, <laughs> Flange Eradicate is not literally my identity. I do not take offense to this product <laughs> that I did not make, much like I did not make DBZ Movie 6. So. You know, That's as, as we were watching it, I, I I heard Goku, the subtitle said Goku was doing Kamehameha, but I heard him say Cho Kamehameha. He did. Yep, yep. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, that means super, right, Randy? And Randy's like, yeah, because he just listened to your podcast where you talked about it 10 years ago or whatever, or how many ever years ago. I realized, oh, I only know what Cho means because of that episode of the Konzenchi podcast <laughs> oh where God. you taught me that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it came full circle. <laughs> we all learn things from different ways, and that's just how he did it. So you're like his teacher. You're his sensei. Oh, how fun. <laughs> My Cho sensei. Uh, <laughs> like, I will say I'm so conflicted so I, I want to hear what y'all have to say about it well like I think like Mike said it's just like a nice throwaway thing that I wouldn't watch too often but it's it's nice to have like I said I wasn't offended by it so I would definitely watch it once every five ten years maybe and I was gonna say and I'll just, watch it in a decade again yeah, yeah. I mean the, the the fight scenes are so beautiful I wish we had a better quality version of it because I did use some of those scenes in an AMV that I made a, a few years back just because of like it's a really cool you don't get a really cool scene of Gohan doing a beam in, in regular Super Saiyan form. It's always Super Saiyan 2 or whatever, what have you not, but yeah, in this, I guess in this it's, thing, he does a Kamehameha. It's worth noting that on the Dragon Box release, where it did finally get a DVD release in Japan, they didn't remaster it like they did with the TV series episodes, so it's 
It's yeah, kind of butt. this is as, as as good as we're gonna get is is what we got. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a if, you know is it just like ah we'll just throw him a bone we'll throw this in there yeah. and it's not really an afterthought and it's kind of an afterthought versus well we don't have the film masters for this so we can't really do anything with it. I feel like it was probably just an afterthought kind of thing, but at the same time mm-hmm. they they did Bardock and Trunk, so I don't know. Yeah. But this yeah. is also I, a, technically a Bondi thing. I don't know. Mm, yeah, back, back, back in the forum days when we would like. A lot of us would like sell stuff to each other. Yeah, there was always there was one guy who always threw in a something special whenever he would sell something to someone, and mm. I was always so curious to know what it was. I'm like, what is this? Everyone says they love it, but they're not saying what it is. <laughs> I finally bought something from him. It ended up being just a a, a blank CD full of uh, all the Dragon Box uh, specials that came. <laughs> In, like the extras, I mean. And so this was on there. And I was like, oh, I finally have it. Awesome. I don't know where it is right now, but it's sitting somewhere. It says like Dragon Box Extras Volume 2 or something on it. So funny. Wild. Also illegal. Uh, that's a crime that you have admitted to. <laughs> um, woo woo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I think they're really, uh, you know, coming down on people with hey, Dragon Box Papa uh, Toe is coming for you. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, true. I got to hide it behind my my entire wall collection of Dragon Ball stuff that I've used to support <laughs> the series for 20 years. <laughs> this is my one thing. And I didn't even buy it. Somebody gave it to me. That's not <laughs> yeah. a crime to be given. A- <laughs> That's it's true. Yeah, I didn't ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> if I, I, if I robbed a mine. bank and I gifted that money to Doug, he didn't commit a crime, you know? <laughs> I will say I also probably haven't watched this in goodness. I don't even know how long. Like, I know I had a fan sub thing of it in like 2002, but I don't think I've sat down and watched the whole thing since. But coming back to it, I was really impressed with a lot of the animation that was there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not hot garbage, but it's not something I'm going to come back to frequently. Um it was just, yeah, it's okay. There's some it's fine. good bits it's, of animation. Uh, I feel like there's some, dare I say, iconic, even like little poses. Um, yeah. Like the, the very last Goku teleporting away in the fire. That's a beautiful little drawing mm-hmm. right there. Uh, yeah. And even just some earlier stuff where they're doing the Ghost Warriors, like the way that the, the camera is positioned and Vegeta comes down from the upper right on the screen. I mean, they replicated that basically as is in Plan to Eradicate yeah. the Super Science because it was beautiful the way they had framed and directed that scene back back then so th- there's some okay stuff in here mm-hmm. yeah i'm uh, i'm impressed with the things that they tried to make good turned out pretty good so <laughs> i gotta give them kudos for that but i suppose that also encompasses kind of what we didn't like unless you explicitly want to say like this part was bad and i don't ever want to see anything like it again i thought it was really weird that trunks had a ice sword Oh, yeah. Remember that? <laughs> was it an ice sword? I mean, I was watching a VHS copy, so I, like, I think that's <laughs> yeah. a sword. Is he using the sword? <laughs> no, no it there's a closer up shot, and it's clearly like a big shard of ice. And I'm right. like, but he has a sword. He uses Why it did we as a this? sword. And I'm like, ah, this this goes back to my my wish that I, I wish that it was just natural for people in Trunks' future to have swords, not just him. Mm. Like, <laughs> that's their way to survive that world with the androids, the artificial humans, that they just have weapons on them at all times. Yeah, I wish this was shorter. And you know what? They did make it shorter when they remade it. So thanks. (laughs) Yep. More mainstream. (laughs) But it also comes with its own caveats. So it is what it is. I don't know. Is there anything else we want to say before we walk away from what we have to say about it? I feel like it's it's a fun curiosity. It's 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 the beginning of what will come later. I mean, it's the basis for what they did in GT. It's 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 pretty important in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's a, a cornerstone of the franchise, even oh, though it's God. kind of treated as it, like not this. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's we go back. Let the record show. Mike was on a podcast where it was said it was a cornerstone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they'll attribute it to you just because you were here. That's just how the internet works. They're not going to listen to this. The cause issue says. The cause issue. The cause issue. All right, fine. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to listen to uh, what other people had to say about uh, this this lost OVA uh, when we come back. All right, we're back, and now we get to hear what you had to say about this uh, very special animated feature for uh, a video game from 1993. Uh, so first up, we have uh, Lego at the Lego Fan 21. Never mind, that's a different thing they're responding to. I just read the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Uh, no, I want to hear it. I want to hear what they said. <laughs> okay, he said, can't wait for the We Got a Pod Pod, where Randy makes a podcast talking about his podcast, We Got a Pod, because... <laughs> Yo, dog. It's like pods. It's like podcast. Oh, my God, Randy, you have to do that now. A podcast oh. reviewing our podcast. Oh, my God. That's, that's what's going to happen. We're going to have the regular show every week, and then the week that it's off is actually going to be me reviewing a previous episode. <laughs> God knows you don't have enough podcasts on your plate. Yes, two is enough. And now I've got a friend who wants me to do another one. I'm like, oh man, once I get the second one out, maybe. Uh, first one up is Martin, uh, who is uh, at the Captain Subasa. Wait, hold on, that's just their handle. It's at the Neckbeard Net, uh, who had to say, love it. Remember my first sort of interaction with it was uh, Tenkaichi. I can't remember which, but I think it was two. What if trail you could play with the same name? Its plot was adjusted to keep the main villain out, but more or less you played the villain and the OVA in it. I'm trying to think if this was one that I'm forgetting or if they're kind of mixing it up with what Raging Blast 2's whole thing is. Oh, I thought um, that's what they were talking about. Isn't that the first time it was in a or well, second time it was in a game? Yeah. Or if it's just like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that might just be a bit of a, a mix up there, unless I'm entirely forgetting that there was a, a what if thing in a Tenkaichi game that was very similar in story, uh, which could be. I don't remember all of those what ifs too Wasn't well. there an arcade game where like you, it was a first person view and you had two fists up and you would fight and then the last boss would be Hachiak? Or am I thinking of something That else? is Majin Ozoto and I can't remember That's what's what the name is. of that game, Mike. That is Dragon Ball Z VR VS Virtual Reality Versus. Right. Yeah, I remember stupid, stupid from face. 1994, yes. Terrible It was face. on your website. Right. <laughs> 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 Skefferton Licorice uh, says, I've only seen the Raging Blast 2 version, but it's an okay story. Nothing super amazing, but there is a reason that it stuck around so long. Interesting enough villain that I'm surprised has only been seen in OVAs. I don't, I feel like because they revisited the same concept with Baby, that it's kind of already has been another thing. Yes. <laughs> and another video yeah, it kind of feels like a retelling of a retelling, but it's actually a retelling of the original. Right. It's really weird. Pancheesy. Doug, this is your friend Pancheesy, Yeah, right? Pancheesy. Uh, I literally imported a Playdia system so I could, quote unquote, play through this gem back when the only <laughs> version available were ratty 30 megabit rips online. Really felt like I had a closely guarded secret back in the day that I was eager to share with anyone willing to listen. Yeah, it really feels like it, to get this was such a, a journey and like you had to actually hunt it down to actually play it. So it felt like this special thing if you were one of the lucky ones to play it back in the day. I, I certainly wasn't. I still haven't played it or I think, yeah, first time I watched it was a few years back, so... I will say I first had it in like a, a fan sub disc that just had a bunch of the movies and stuff. And there was just a file that was called Dragon Ball Z Ova. And I'm like, what is this? And I started watching it. And I'm like, all right, this is weird. And then there is the random map screen uh -huh. of like zipping around the map. I'm like, what is happening? This is a choice. What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I saw the word or the letters Ova. And I'm like, did they misspell AMV? Because I was back when I was in my AMV. <laughs> case, I'm like... I search it up. I, I, I land on Konzenshu.com or Dizenshu.com where it was back then. And I was more confused after reading the description than I was when I first started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's an original animation video, but it's also part of like biology where like here's how babies are made. I don't understand. Like, <laughs> Not at all. So Jake Pay says, quite succinctly, both the original and remake were butt. Uh, <laughs> That's a technical so term strong, right there. Right. Yes, I'm sorry. Te very technical term. Put uh, on the cover of the disc. <laughs> uh writer 4z says i'm upset it was never brought over and you know what i'm also sad that i mean like all these little tidbits we should just be freely available should yeah be i wonder if it's someone. ever like in someone's back pocket to ever bust out one day and just have them even just dub it you know the the 18th blu-ray release of dragon ball z will include the never before seen lost episode <laughs> digitally remastered <laughs> well like you like it was meant to be seen you know how that goes <laughs> uh okay lego does come back and he says i've only seen the remake on raging blast 2 i think it's a decent distraction makes no sense but i like they expanded on the cyan lore a bit and it was like a smaller z broly movie yeah did the uh, special come like did you have to did it come as a separate disc or did you have to play the game to actually watch it no it, it's on the game disc and by watching it you actually unlock hachiyaka as a playable character so oh yeah. uh, okay I remember having for 30 minutes and that's it. I never I never bought the game, but I did buy the Connect game that had the Bardock special and you had yes. to have a Connect uh -huh. to even play sure the did. damn thing. How ridiculous oh, was that? Oh man, that's a bummer. 
Uh, and then finally, John Rogers, Magic Box 67 says, Having never played the Famicom or Playdia games, I can only judge them as the original standalone feature and the remake, which are both fighting for fighting's sake nonsense. Shunsuke Kikuchi's music is missed, and Ghost Warriors is still the worst twist we've seen from <laughs> Dragon Ball. They're Ghost Warriors. <laughs> That's all it is. Just it's like you know, it's ghost, it's ghost warriors. What else do I have to say? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna wrap this up with our trivia. Uh, and since there's two of you here, I'm gonna pit oh, no. both of you against each other. All right, hold on. Gonna have... I feel so confident. I wa- <laughs> I want I want to give Doug the right of first refusal. So Doug, <laughs> I want you, you get first guess. And no, I'm I'm, I'm in. all in. I'm ready to to embarrass you like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> So we're not going to do buzzing, is what Mike says. He wants Doug to have no, the first guess, and back. he will take the second yeah, one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's go. I'm serious? so ready. Oh, I'm no. so ready. <laughs> this is not fair. All right, Doug, strap in. If I knew ten years go. ago that this would lead to this, <laughs> I never would have listened. I don't even want that changed. autograph anymore. <laughs> I gotta earn it. <laughs> the autograph is just gonna be like, "You suck, I win." Love Mike, and that's all it's gonna be. Just the bill for his laundry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Question number one. I try to make this one a little bit simpler, but here we go. I'm ready. True or false? Kenji Yamamoto composed the music for the remake of the feature, "Plan to Eradicate the Super Science." False. That's okay, that's correct. But who was it, Doug? I don't know who it was. I barely. I know Kenji Yamamoto has a name, and that's it. <laughs> you Ray tell is us all the names. You tell us who was it, Mike? That was Hiroshi Takaki, who I believe also did episode of Barda. I think you're correct, but that's kind of the end of his whole thing. Cause, yeah, that's it for Dragon Ball. <laughs> right, because huh. I'm trying to remember when that came out. That was like fall 2010. Was the Kenji Yamamoto scandal? the thing yet and they were just like we got to figure out what we're going to do for dragon ball music oh, now geez. or was he still around that was was that 20 oh, there's a website that would tell you this was that that's true <laughs> uh, Kanzu, <laughs> Kanzu, Kanzu, <laughs> was that early 2011 i think that was when that happened because it was towards yeah, it was the March end of 2011 kai yeah okay okay so, so the, he was still doing stuff yeah so it wasn't necessarily related to that that was just i think it was probably like well this is a bondi thing it's a shueisha thing at the same time so you know, we're just gonna go a different direction kind of thing mm, that makes sense that's what i was gonna say but then we didn't keep him around when everything happened and said we went with um oh now i'm just blanking on the name goodness uh, the guy who did uh, Battle of Gods and Super... Sumitomo. Uh, Sumitomo. For whatever, I could just think of Daisuke Nishio, and I'm like, nope, not a music guy. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not a music guy. Um, but yeah, so it's... Uh, I don't know. I would have... Uh, having listened and watched Plan to Eradicate the Super Science with, the, with Sumitomo in the conversation now, I was like, I actually dig this guy's stuff, like, for... That I, you know, because back then all I could compare it to is, well, it's not Kikuchi, so why would I care? But yeah, I remember it's, being it's halfway decent. Well regarded. I felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that's how it was. For some reason in my brain, I was like, did people not like this? I can't remember, but good to know. Uh, so, Doug, you got one. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Great. In the, in this extra challenge. So number two, other than. Plan to eradicate the science, true plan to eradicate the science, and plan to eradicate the super science. What is one other game that Hachiak has appeared in? Didn't we just say this or no? I'm th- I thought I thought of the freaking arcade game. Uh, was he in a DS game? Um, I don't. I. I that I'm means say, no. I guess. I'm so say I, no. I, I have no idea. Mike, do you have an answer? Well, I mean, you said plan to eradicate the super signs, and that came as a part of Raging Blast 2, so that would be one well, answer. I would say not Raging Blast 2. I meant to say that, too. And I'll, I could give it to you because of the technicality. All right, right Dragon Ball Heroes. To... Fine. <laughs> Boom. That's all you have to say. Just <laughs> oh, say no Dragon way. Ball Heroes. It's the answer to everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think of going like to the future, what games he's been in like <laughs> recently, yesterday. Oh, <laughs> no. I mean, like, yeah, it's been he's in uh, in standard uh, heroes. Yeah. He was in Ultimate Mission 2, Ultimate Mission X. So I, I wouldn't he's... know regardless anyway. So I would have <laughs> taken an L on that one. Well, unfortunately, that we've got more Heroes questions for you. Uh, no. <laughs> My weakness. In Dragon Ball Heroes, God Mission 6, Hachi <laughs> What does that mean? Fuses with another Dragon Ball character to menace our heroes. <laughs> Who does he fuse with, Doug? <laughs> he fuses with uh, Mr. Popo. 
No, incorrect. <laughs> Mike, what's the answer? Baby Hachaku, bring them together That's... at long last. <laughs> That's right. Oh, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just logical. You put those two together. That idea that idea made me excited and bored <laughs> all in the same <laughs> second. <laughs> well, unfortunately, the fun doesn't stop here. We've got one last one. What other video game original character fights and defeats Hachikok in the Dragon Ball Heroes manga, specifically during the Prison Planet arc? Defeats? I, I don't know. Shallot? No. Nope. Shallot <laughs> Heroes? That's a good, good pick, though. Oh. Uh, Mike, do you have an idea? Doug, you know him. You already said his name. It's Azoto. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was it Azoto? He's back? <laughs> He's Azoto's back. back, too. Everyone's back. <laughs> Everyone's here no. for heroes. Damn you, heroes! <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So I don't, I, Doug. I think you got one. Oh, actually, I, do, I skipped over one. Here we go. You can keep skipping over it. <laughs> nope, nope. This one is not heroes related, so it's okay. You can you can be happy with that. Who is the English voice actor of Hachiyak <laughs> in Raging Blast Two? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Chris Sabat. Yeah, he got it. Oh was it really? <laughs> yes. I mean, just say Chris Sabat. That's the answer. <laughs> Those answers are either heroes or Chris Sabat, and that covers a lot of bases. <laughs> it does. Mike, did you know that one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, man, you're supposed to be the, the be-all, end-all of everything. You got to know what Chris Sabat's up to these days. That's what you got to do. I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a call real quick. <laughs> what are you doing, right. baby? <laughs> uh that's uh that's pretty much it uh thank you for listening we love interacting with you and keeping you in the conversation talking about our favorite franchise in the world you can tweet at us at we got a pod you can email us at we got a pod at gmail.com doug you started reading that super manga i know you're in the middle of berserk but <laughs> yeah i started reading thing. a different manga as opposed to the manga you've been trying to get me to read for the longest time <laughs> sorry <laughs> i know uh, thank you to Rifty Beats for letting us use his track Kakarot theme hip hop trap remix. You can find it and other great tracks by Rifty on his SoundCloud. Thanks to our sponsors. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Where yeah, can people thanks, man. find you? Uh, www.kanzenshuu.com. That is Kanzenshu. That is not Kazenshu. That is not Kazenshu. That is not Kaizenshu. <laughs> There's no the in front of it. We are not a series of guidebooks or anything like I said that. So we're gonna buy the books. <laughs> um, I'm 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 a really I personally am a really old website. Uh, I started in 1998, <laughs> and I am still here in 2022. Uh, I believe I believe in the power of friendship. Yes, and that's why I enjoy podcasts. But I believe in the power of documentation and history and facts and accuracy. And text is the end all be all. F- format i say on a podcast that doesn't have a transcription but anyway here we are um, hell yeah man that's me that's you i would i i do want to say and i'm pretty sure we've we've brought it up in other things before honestly this podcast and and where i am at least as a dragon ball fan i would not be in the same place without you and and you as a website uh it's been very important and special to me in and making me the person i am today so thank thank you so oh, fuck thanks, you mike please. yeah thanks. well <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, Doug, where, where do people find you? I'm um, Jabaz Doug, and, uh, you can catch me up on Mario Kart podcast where we talk about <laughs> <laughs> everything and everything. Oh, that's, we cover so much there and, uh, it's a good time. Uh, Mike, you didn't plug that. That's another thing that we gotta be I letting guess, people know about. You know what? Y'all are, are there more often than not too. So yeah, every Saturday night on my personal Twitch, it, it started as me with some of my buddies just during the pandemic wanting to play games every week um and at some point jp turned his webcam towards the tv so jeff could watch and then we're like you know we're just going to stream this and so we've been streaming <laughs> um our saturday night mario kart sessions for um well over a year now at this point i forget yeah, exactly how long this it's been really been fun going. um yeah it's fun i mean pandemic is still a thing um let no one say mm-hmm. that it's not yep. so um we're <laughs> still hanging out virtually every saturday night and uh, it's been a, an important thing to me and a highlight of my week um so in addition to uh Konzenshu, look up vegeto ex that's me by the way if i didn't re-say that screen name um that's me on twitch <laughs> perfect uh and you can catch me at saber underscore breaker i'm here and there 
from time to time. I don't know. I've been taking a break from Twitter. And you know what? Feels pretty That's good. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to be connected all of the time. Um, but I'll still talk to people if they reach out to me. I'll get notifications of like, hey, somebody added you or DM'd you. So it's great. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's our show. Uh, subscribe, tell your friends, post review. It super helps us out. And uh, we'll catch you next time with more bottom of the barrel stuff. See ya. Bye.